Well, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Tuesday, April 9th um, meeting of the Select Board here at the Lakeville Senior Center. Um, Lake Cam is recording. Is anybody else recording at this time? All right, meeting's called at order. So first thing, um, Pledge of Allegiance. April 30th. If you no longer have your dog, please let the town clerk's office know. Just give them a call, or if you're in the area, just stop in and let them know. Uh, election just happened, but we still have quite a few vacancies on some of our boards, committees, and commissions. So if you do have any interest whatsoever, uh, you can reach out to any of your, your officials to get some information on it or contact the select board's office. Uh, right now, we have Cable Advisory Committee, the Capital Expenditure Committee, and that would be an appointment uh, made by the town moderator, the Cemetery Commission, Conservation Commission, Energy Advisory Committee, Parks Commission, Lakeville Arts Council, and the Open Space Committee. So if there's any interest whatsoever, just you know, reach out to one of your elected officials or the select board's office. Um, just a little fun fact for Lakeville here. Uh, Lakeville was settled in 1717, play that number tonight or tomorrow, um, as a western parish of Middleborough. It was a long trip for settlers of the outlying area to get to Middleborough townhouse by foot or by horse to do town business. So the settlers back in that time uh, made a few attempts to become their own, have their own little town, and on May 13th, 1853, Lakeville was incorporated as its own separate town. There you go. Um, I'd like to give a little shout out uh, to our library director, Jennifer Jones, and our youth services librarian, Teresa Murra. Um, for stepping up, uh, we had a meeting at the uh, the library not too long ago, and there were you know quite a few uh, participants that had you know shown up, and they jumped right to it and you know tried to set up a TV for you know overflow, and I know that was a little bit of outside their, their normal activities on a on an evening, but I just wanted to give them a little shout out because they really jumped up to try to accommodate the crowd. So um, thank you for that. The Freetown Lakeville Regional School District will be conducting a survey at some point soon um, as they prioritize improvements for the five district schools. So stay tuned for that and we'll just keep you updated here. Um, I'm sure that there'll be a, a link at some point on our town website uh, you know, for that. So I just wanted to give everybody a heads up. Um, anybody else um, from the board? Do you guys have anything that's happened this week that you'd like to? Um, yeah. So with the eclipse yesterday, um, I do know that the library put together a really nice, I went by to pick up glasses on Monday, Monday, yesterday, and they had the whole NASA feed going live in the big room and there was, I knew something was up, I didn't know they were doing it, but um, I thought that was really great. They had a whole bunch of people there, they were sharing the live feed, and then also here at the Senior Center, um, they did um, something for the seniors and they kind of put it all together. I know Lori, Lori staff put it together really quickly here. I thought that was great. You know, I mean, those are really, uh, there was a lot of people too at the library. So it was nice to see all the community interest there. Yeah. yeah. So thank you again to Jen and to Lori here from the Senior Center for doing that. Yep. Anything? All right. Well, let's turn it over to. Uh, Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, just one item from my uh, TA report. Uh, 
Several weeks ago, we had a meeting with uh, MassDOT for an update on the Route 79 project. Uh, at the meeting with representatives of Beta Group, uh, MassDOT, Attorney Eichmann from KP Law, and uh, DPW Director. Uh, so we talked about uh, the project and where it stands now. It's a $20 million project. Uh, it consists of um, 2.5 miles. It is uh, funded by municipal, state, and federal. Uh, the feds are picking up 80 percent, the state is picking up 20 percent, and the town of Lakeville is picking up the cost for design and land takings. There are 286 parcels of land involved. Those include uh, parcels owned by property owners as well as uh, permanent and temporary easement. There are 87 property owners uh, where land takings will be uh, involved. All 87 property owners will receive a visit this summer uh, some for an interview uh, during the months of July uh, and August. So there are 87 property owners that will be contacted along Route 79 within the 2.5 mile uh, project. The work will start in the spring of 2026. It's on the fiscal year 25 TIP program and it's a three to five year project. So that is an update on the Route 79 project. Obviously, our DPW director, Frank Bowman, is, is, uh, is heavily involved. And if there are any changes, I'm sure he will let us all know. Thank you for that. Anybody have any questions? Um, I do. So when you say they'll get a visit, um, explaining things? Yes. Or just yes. They're in the process of hiring either a company or someone, an individual, to visit all the property owners and to have a discussion of what the process is, yes. Okay. They're also in the process of, ho of, of uh, hiring an appraisal company, uh, obviously because all the parcels need to be appraised at fair market value. That's nice, actually. It's going on for quite some time now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll get more updates as, as we get closer to that. All right, so next item, um, so we need to discuss, uh, possibly vote on the assignment of the Plymouth County American Rescue Plan Act uh, certifier and filer. And um, can Mr. Uh, Nunes um, can just update us on uh, what this exactly what sure. this means? So we did uh, have a conversation with Plymouth County, and they did give us a go ahead to expend the remaining balance in the ARPA funding, which is a little over $800,000. Uh, but before we submit our list, we need to vote this evening to uh, assign a Plymouth County ARPA certifier and filer. Um, in my capacity as interim town administrator, I will be the certifier, and Todd Hassett as the town accountant will be the filer. So this is a procedural thing that is a requirement of the federal government. So we're asking you for a vote this evening. There was something similar, Madam Chair, for uh, CARES money, wasn't there? Yes, yes. absolutely, okay. yes. All right, do we hear a motion? Um, I'll make a motion. Um, I'll read it. Inside. Please. Um, that the town administrator is authorized to approve, finalize, and submit on behalf of the town any such offer grant application and to make all representations and certifications required to be made on behalf of the town to complete each such application with such approval, representations and certifications to be evidenced by the signature of the town administrator on such application. And if such ARPA grant is awarded, the town administrator shall be the recipient of such grant on behalf of the town. And the second half of the motion is that the town accountant is authorized to prepare and enter information into the Plymouth County American Rescue Plan portal in support or of one or more applications to Plymouth County for grants or for grants to be funded from a grant received by Plymouth County under the American Rescue Plan Act. Okay, second. Second. All right, so second. Yep. Um, any further discussion on these? Hearing none, all those in favor, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Fabian aye. Carboni aye. Tony aye. 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 Aye.
Um, <laughs> well, I figured maybe we'll just go around. Yeah, I was just trying to remind <laughs> the right. candido. Okay. Like, yeah. All right, so uh, I'll start then. Okay. Yeah. Just to Can I ask you seconded in that? Um, I did. Thank you. No, this is going to just take us a little while to get used to. Yeah, a little bit. Extra. We got it. We got Input it. Input here. Okay, so um, next order of business. Um, so we have a list of uh, some items here that uh, it's just the first page is a summary of the ARPA, uh, I guess how we've gotten to where we are today, and then some capital projects. But um, Mr. Nunes, if you wouldn't mind just kind of walking sure. us through this. Please. So we have um, a balance of $818,384. Um, obviously that's un unaudited, uh, but that is what we have um, going forward as a balance. Uh, there are a number of projects that we can move forward with. We would like to notify the county by the end of the month. Uh, you can see from the U.S. Department of Treasury what ARPA funding is, uh, what ARPA funding is eligible for, various projects, uh, spending on government services. Uh, and you have a list that was submitted by department heads that are not on the capital improvement plan. I'd like to have the Capital Expenditures Committee early next week. I think the capital budget is going to be discussed next week. Um, so I'd like to have a Capital Planning Committee early next week so we can, um, when we discuss the capital budget before the select board, that you know we have some votes from the Capital Expenditures Committee. Okay, so you're asking to just, um, at least, I pulled off on the on the vote too. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't know if you want to vote this evening or what projects you would like to see move forward out of the eight hundred thousand. Um, I know last time uh, the select board voted on ARPA projects. Um, from what I'm told, the capital expenditures committee did not vote on the ARPA projects. Right. Right. Okay. So, so I'll leave it up to you. Uh, we'll do whatever you, you would like. Because I haven't seen the, um, you know, the updated capital listing, so I don't know what was. So none of these items were on on that list. So we moved one from the list over onto the uh, Well, we kind of changed it. That was the Council on Aging one. Was that that was on? Okay. The, yeah. Uh, that, that was an addition. That was on the capital plan. Yep. But with that's been changed now to just an addition for the food pantry. Yeah. Uh, so that one's yeah, yeah. changed over. So we, that came off of the capital plan, and we put it on the ARPA. Yeah. Because it's basically a different project. Yeah. yeah. So. And that, I'm sorry. In that project, the council on aging food pantry that will, I think, uh, select board member Fabian said at our last meeting, there are also several earmarks and grants that the CLA yep. have that will contribute to the funding for that project. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do we? want to just sort of go through the list and figure out which ones because the irrigation wells probably won't work that's for correct the, for, for Plymouth for County. Plymouth County. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um I have significant comments on a lot of these as well. And just to get it out there, I wouldn't mind the capital expenditure committee's input on some of these as well before we take the final vote, but I know yeah. we have a, have a deadline that's encouraging as well. Right. As long as we vote have the vote the vote in by the end of the month. Yeah, as long as we get anything by the end of the month. Todd will notify Plymouth County of the votes this evening, authorizing the certifier and okay. file, and that is the first step in the process. Um, so that will be done this week. Todd is in on Thursday. He will do that Thursday. And then, uh, you know, and then we have another meeting for the end of the month. All right, on the 22nd. So maybe we we'll just take this moment to discuss some of these as a group and then um, yeah. get back from the, yeah, the recommendations of the. Yeah, there was a couple when we met that I think a couple of us were like, oh, what's that exactly? So maybe that would help just shed some light right now on some of these. Um, I don't know what, it sounds like Brian has probably some more organized mm -hmm. questions maybe. Maybe we go off of him. <laughs> <laughs> They're organized. Huh? Well, um, so this would be the page starting in capital project requests, right? Starting with the Arts Council. So I guess the first question would be, well, here's a general question. A lot of these still have to be determined. Have we gotten numbers for any of these, or are those still? Officially, no. Okay. 
Um, I shouldn't say that. Um, Chief O'Brien, I think, did receive quotes uh, for his items. Um, I don't believe the parks went out and got official quotes. Um, the irrigation wells, that, that number did come from the BMW director. The public works, those numbers, the resurfacing of Holland Road, Southworth, and Leonard, that did come from the DPW director. And the town hall roof, two small sections, I believe that did come from the facilities director. And the food pantry did come from the facilities manager and the building commissioner, as an estimate, working with the seaway director. Okay. So, Brian, what did you um? So. I mean, I mean, thank you for answering that. Anything that still have to be determined makes me nervous. Um, we've had a bunch of projects that didn't have enough lately, and we had to go back, and this isn't really a situation where we can go back. Um, I kind of made my comments departmentalized, so just alphabetically. Um, fire is the first one. Scuba fill stations, if, I didn't know if that's a, a want or a need, and if that's something we can integrate into the new station design or not, if it's critical. You know, hundred thousand dollars. What would the return on that investment be? Does it cost us now? You know, it's a big chunk of change for many other things we could use for. Similarly, for the prefab building, you know, again, is that something we can integrate into the fire station project? Is that something multiple municipalities could use? You might want to chip in on permanent structure or mobile structure. I don't know the answers, but those are questions that come to mind. Um, those just seem like two really big ones. Where it's like we've got another whole project that going, is that better suited there or not? Um, I can keep going, that's a little Please pause there. <laughs> uh, so let's see, next, irrigation walls, I did make comments on because of what Leah said, since that's a tough one. Um, so parks is next alphabetically. Um, Skate park, the 150,000, if that was a real number, if we have anything to back that up. Again, I don't want to come back and find out we're 50,000 shy or, you know, and such, or 50,000 over and have allocated it to the wrong thing. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, now, if we are shy on it, mm -hmm. there is no, is there a, a statute that says we have to pay for the project in total from this money, or can we use other funds? As I'm well. sure we could use other funds. Yes, yeah. we could use other funds. Okay, so it, it, if it does come up that we are short, yeah. it would have to come out of free cash. This is not the year to look for other funds. <laughs> <laughs> no, but grants, gifts. If, if I may on that, um, if there's remaining ARPA funds, we could definitely use ARPA funds. Yeah. But if there's not, we would have to, like you said, use other funding yep. source. Yep. <clears throat> In regards to the pavilion, uh, that project will be going out to bid again. Most likely it will uh, be higher than the $38,000 or so, $40,000 that we estimated to come in at. We were using $10,000 from OPERA, $10,000 from the Friends of the Library, and $10,000 from the Arts Council. Um, I'm pretty confident that the Arts Council, and I'm hopeful that the Arts Council and the Friends will continue to um, be supportive of the project and, and make that donation for the project. But most likely it's going to come in higher than $40,000, so we'll probably have to use ARPA funds to offset that. And this is for the sound system and speakers, correct? And then the sound system is okay. not included as well. All right. So the sound system is new. Okay. Um, where we need to pay for the sound system. It was coming from other funding, but I don't think that's going to that's gonna happen now. So um, we want to make sure we can have a decent sound system there. Because yeah, it will be utilized a lot too. And I'm not quick I'm not sure if the old town hall, hall restroom project one hundred eighty three thousand seven hundred dollars, if that included the restroom, the septic system and the pavilion, I'm not quite sure on that. I don't think they told well, the pavilion, but it definitely I think it, I think it took care of the the, um, the, the plumbing and all yep. of that. I'm pretty sure it did. So we may have to go back to select board minutes to see when that was discussed with the select board, what needs included. Okay. Madam Chair, yep. the pavilion's always been a separate project. It has? Yes. But I don't see it on the county, so, or the federal. All right, we'll find that out. Brian, do you have more? 
Oh, we got three pages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have five minutes. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> um, so, what was next? Parks. Okay, so the skate park we talked about. Um, I'll just make a general comment. Clear Pond, we've been asking, or thought we've been asking for like a master plan to consider upper funds for the last year. I don't think we've seen that. Uh, but we now have at least a playground and a, um, the basketball courts mentioned. If we just spent $170,000 on the Kamash playground, we realize it might not be an equal comparison, but I just get a little nervous seeing only 45000 listed there. Does that include demolition of the existing one and removal? Um, same comment for the playground at John Vaughn Park, just whether or not that's a real number based on what we saw at Kamash. I would, if I may, yes, I would say that those uh, the three projects for parks, you know, I think they may be underestimated based on other projects. I know they talked to talk to the DPW about removing the existing playground, um, so that's definitely, that's definitely not included in this. Because if if we end up allocating, you know, funds and um, it's under and we can't find additional funds to support the project, then, so the money has been allocated for that project, so how would we go back to be allocated for something else? We have to be done at town meeting. Right. To supplement. Okay. So I know at the, um, Madam Chair, I know that at um, our capital expenditures meeting that we had a couple of weeks ago, I know I said that um, I'm okay trying to put some more money into the skate park and maybe something at John Pond, but Clear Pond for me is a tough one because it's open eight weeks of the year, nine weeks of the year, and I just, and otherwise it's basically locked. So I don't want us to get into a situation where folks are saying, oh, why did you put a playground there if we can't use it, you know, 10 months out of the year. And I don't think we can afford to staff Clear Pond because there is the water there that's, you know, kind of a big concern. So, um, we, we did kind of talk about that. Yeah. You, and remodeling the bit of a public nuisance being behind a chain link fence, having equipment that people can't use, would probably be a lot of strife that would be caused by doing something like that, where people are jumping over and damaging equipment or damaging locks, um, similar to what we saw during COVID, where when people couldn't get on the uh, basketball courts, they were climbing, climbing on the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, I agree that that's where the capital expenditures, you know, they have a lot of their conversations. Madam Chair, may I make a suggestion? Yeah, no, that would be great. I'm just, I'm looking at this <laughs> thing to myself. Lot. I'm not so, quite sure how to address all this. So, so maybe we're going about this the wrong way. Maybe we should all look at things that we all agree on, um, that we can move forward and possibly, you know, make a motion or move forward on to get some of those things done. There's a lot of remaining questions. So maybe some of the ones that are pretty solid that we know. Yeah, that we know that we can, you know, kind of talk about and discard or move forward with so the ARPA funds can be allocated in the most expedient way. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Maureen, because some of these I would definitely like to see and I see we have the chief here yeah. so he could answer the questions on the fire and at least, you know, we could go through um, go through those. Um, <laughs> but um, I do have a couple of questions, um, just as Brian does on some of these things, um, like the irrigation wells. I'm pretty sure it's pretty expensive to run those irrigate, the, the water, to pay for the water, isn't it? Is oh, yes. that Yeah. Absolutely. So that's, is, those are something that we may want to push forward because in the, I think in the long run, it'll start paying for itself by not having to pay those high utility bills on that. So if that's the case, I wouldn't mind lumping those together, moving them forward. It's got and a three year ROI on that yeah. with the, the bills. We could maybe submit with the federal opera funds, direct the direct funding rather yeah. than Plymouth County. Yeah, because I don't think Plymouth County right. will do the, right. yeah.
actual wells. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, th those I think we could knock out right away and say, let's move those forward because, you know, we'll, they'll pay for themselves. Because so. yeah, there was a challenge with the, um, the library irrigation, I think, for quite some time with, you know, having to shut off from Ted Williams camp and, you know, coming back. So having it isolated for each one, they'll be able to control it better, I think. So, mm -hmm. so I only see two on here. There's no other ones, right? It's just the I library. I think it was just the two. Library and the police, yes. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I believe there's another well we requested under the normal capital plan as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's three well projects. Okay, that's which. Do you guys remember talking about that at the Capitol? Or did it not? I do, but I don't yeah, remember yeah. it being separate, so. Um, then again, I'm getting that. In the interest of time, I also have a number of items that I would have liked to have seen. I, I, I'm struggling because all of this is just full of like opinion and comment and such. I could really send it to everybody outside of the meeting. Like I can just run through all the, Hit the highlights. missing things. Yeah. Um, I'll try to go quick. Okay. So parks, um, any ADA improvements for beach and water access at Clare Pond? Um, we're almost in the season for Clare Pond, so if there's any kind of beach calming or research, refreshing the, the sand at Clare Pond. Um, improvements of fence sight lines at Clare Pond. I don't know if anybody's ever left there. Looking left is almost impossible. I mean, what kind of vehicle work on it? Some big trees growing up against the fence. You know, they consider pulling the fence line back, you know, five, ten feet, and you know, taking down a few of the ones mm -hmm. that you can't see through. Parking lot grading and drainage at Ted Williams Camp, we've moved on lodge since we try to market it. And if there's kind of rains, you've seen you know, voting or if there's weddings and such, people are trudging through massive puddles in that area. Um, maybe some simple free wall handball courts. It's just cement that gets poured in place, kind of a U-shape, that's easy. Regrading and seeding the existing soccer fields, um, new entrance signage at the parks, and adding illumination because I think they basically have like solar signs or solar lights right now, at least on the priest's street side. Um, see public works, I'd like to see us expedite the budget material being removed. That's still ongoing. It's going to take us another five or six years under the current plan. I'm really afraid that the cost is going to surge over the next few years, or they're going to lose the location. The which, I'm sorry. But the highlight here in the back. Oh, oh, okay. Yep. Um, could we extend you know, the water line that was mentioned, not just to the potential fire department's location, but also to North Fields? Because then we wouldn't need that well project, and then they'd have potable water if necessary. Um, let's see. With fire showing us the need for a UTV, would uh, police? Also benefit from smaller ATVs for community policing and dining snack and similar areas of getting access to the, uh, the UMBTA lines. Um, improvements in the security camera infrastructure. You know, parks ran into a problem where they couldn't add on to that because there were some deficiencies, but I think I heard in another meeting that might be being fixed. Um, again, a general was just any ADA projects, and then perhaps if it qualifies, the stuff Trace has been working on for a while. Those were all right. what I thought were missing things. There's still plenty of other comments, but. I see uh, Member Fabian has the capital plan. Yep. Yeah. Is there, a, you said a well, another That's well? That's what I'm looking, I can't see very well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see one. It was like Northfield Water and Electricity, I thought it was one of them. Northfield Water and Electricity, 15,000 in the 2025 budget. Right. No well, just, it's, what does it say, what? Water electric. Okay. Which I believe the plan is to plug into a shallow well nearby, but not a potable well. Just for like hand washing or? If you've got access to fill a water bottle, it's potable. It needs to be. If you've got more than, more than 25 people, you become a public water. Water, water. drinking water, and, and then uh, it has to be over tested. That's the problem with John Pond. Right. You know, I'm open to suggestions on how we want to move this forward because I mean I definitely want to hear the recommendation from the um, capital expenditure um, as to your priorities um, to be addressed in FY25. Um, and 
maybe it's the, the higher costing items that we put through that are needed. Madam Chair, I'm going to make a recommendation on three of the items and see if the, we can get a vote to push a few through and then we'll have more conversations if that be. Yeah, no, okay. Thank you. I'd like to make a recommendation to uh, approve the Council on Aging Addition of the Food Pantry is item number one. Item number two would be the town hall roof. I'll give the amounts to $10,000. Sorry, Tracy, I wasn't thinking of it. $250K for the addition for the food pantry, $10,000 for the roof, $9,800 for the transport trailer for the fire department, and then $60,250 for crack ceiling would be my motion. Okay, what was, again, I'm sorry, food pantry? Food pantry, town hall roof, transport for fire station UTV, and then down to the public works for the 60000 for the crack ceiling. Can I convince you to have a, a CBA fill station and we can talk about it, or do you not want to go there? Um, let me see. Where was that? Yeah. Yeah. That was in the fire department. Oh, the scuba fill. Yeah. Can I change the questions again? Yeah. I can leave it bearing questions. Like, we can ask the chief. Yeah. We have a motion on the thing. Should I go? Yes. Need a second. Yeah, I need a second. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Madam Chair, if I may. If I may. Just for, just for the record, that the chief is here on another on another item. He's not here for Hopper. Yep. So I don't want other department heads to think that they were not invited. <laughs> so, Chief is here for other items, but it's so willing to answer questions. You treat everyone equally. Treat everyone equally. I know, I killed the flag three times like a ninja. Yeah. 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 The, um, the SCBA fill station, the one we currently have, is end of life. It's, uh, it broke down for about three or four months this year. We're filling bottles in Berkeley and Rainham. Um, it, it's uh, so it was an inconvenient thing. It cost me, I think, in the neighborhood of about seven thousand dollars to repair this year. Which is pleasing my equipment uh, repair budget. The intent in the budgeting is to include transfer to a new fire station if, if that comes to be, and the. Um, so the intent and the strategy is to, to lower the soft costs of the new fire station, uh, but it'll function perfectly fine in the existing building. Question, Question for Chief. Okay, it's movable? Yeah, that's, uh, that's something we clar clarified. We, we, there's a $250,000 version that's on wheels, uh, and then a $100,000 uh, $100, version that would cost about $5,000 to move. So um, that was included in the estimate. Okay. Okay. But either way, through you, Madam Chair, we're going to need one for the new station. And Absolutely. right now, it sounds like this one's on its last leg, anyways. Okay. Okay. So before, um, with items one through four, it's three hundred and thirty thousand fifty dollars. Yep. And then you know, if we include the, um, the SCBA. Um, I'm assuming that's scuba, right? So what, is that? You actually I, said I, it look at the that. first time. Okay. That's the Okay. Because clearly it stands for something. Um, it so fills the self-contained breathing apparatus. It fills the breathing you know, apparatus. <laughs> right? I'm looking at scuba. I'm like, how are we filling water? Yeah. yeah. Works for it's, me. It's different tanks for underwater, okay. right? That's the one that they would need to go. You'd need to go into a fire. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, uh, and then the self-contained breathing apparatus. Self-contained breathing apparatus is what we. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then, yes. Um, do we want to take these by department? Because perhaps bundling them all together, people would vote differently if they're separate or all bundled. Well, we have a motion in a second on the floor. If you want to, um, not do you want me to withdraw it? You guys want to vote on it? Right. Um, the only reason I would like to stay with that one is because I think even the capital expenditures committee was pretty. Pretty sure we need to do these, so um, including the um, bill, and we clarify that we can move it. Um, and then I think going by department might be better, but I know I just want to move these four or five through. That's, um, I agree that with Maureen that we should just 
move some of them along. So with those five, we're at 430,217. I don't know if anybody else checked the math, but um, that's roughly what I have with those. <clears throat> so if that was coming from the allotment available, uh, is this going to be from the direct? Was this going to be for direct funding, or are we going to go the through direct, the direct would be uh, the library and police irrigation wells, and then the remainder would be Plymouth County. Okay, so this would be for Plymouth County. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure. Plymouth County. So that still leaves us uh, just a little over 400, I think, on the table for that. Um, and Brian, maybe you know, going through the departments for the next piece of it might work for you too. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? So is the tanks in that motion? Yes. Is in that motion. Is in that motion. Yeah. Okay. motion. So Madam Chair, can we have the motion officially amended to include the SCBA fill system yes. station? Amended? Amended. Okay. Second. Alright, any discussion? Right. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Baby and I. Candido. Carboni, aye. Donahue, aye. Baby, no. All right, so next step, um, do we want to vote the, um, the irrigation? Is there a motion for those two? Make a motion to do the um, irrigation well at the library as well as the irrigation well at the police station. From the direct funding? Yes, because that one won't be covered by the county. There's a motion. Do I hear a second? The two wells. The yes. two wells. Second. And discussion. So roughly that's um, about 60000 for those. Just the discussion that it makes sense to do it from the perspective of um, having it hooked up to, to the water supply is actually more expensive than this and you get your money back in um, you know, less, than, less than five years, less than seven years max. So yes. Yeah, yeah. So it would be uh, it would be something that would actually reduce our operating budget in the long term, which I am all for. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Baby and I. Candido aye. Carboni aye. Tony you aye. Day aye. Okay. All right. So um, can we put this back on the agenda for the twenty second? Yes. And we'll talk about how we'll put it on there based on uh, it'll be after the discussion after the <laughs> Ma madam chair can i make a uh, suggestion yeah um that we go back to the department heads and ask them for a little bit more clarification on the remaining items um and maybe include uh today's questions if he has a lot of them five pages board them on if you'd like not be a bad idea <laughs> so, Madam Chair, I think um, Brian had questions and possible additions. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Can you forward those mm -hmm. to us through yep. Bob or whatever? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It looks like you put a lot of work into that. I see a lot of. Yeah. I was very impressed with the Park ADA <laughs> one. Yeah. Me too. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, based on what Member Carboni said, so I will reach out to department heads to see how they came up with these costs, kind of some backup. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Member Day could send along to all the members. Yeah, email I have that, but yeah. I can break that up and send that off to the departments. Maybe I'll update this and send okay. it to you. Excellent. You want I'll circulate it. Thanks. Excellent. <laughs> and also, um, if you wouldn't mind updating the summary. Um, sheet, so we'll have that as well yep. for our discussion in the next week. Yep. So, all right, 
All right, let's move on to select board minutes. Everybody have an opportunity to look at the minutes um, from the meeting of March 11th and March 25th. I like to do minutes independently if I can, so do I hear a motion um, for the minutes of March 11th? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Baby and I. Uh, Candido abstain. Carboni, aye. Donahue abstain. Day aye. Okay, motion passes. Um, March 25th, 2024. Any other motion? Uh, so moved. Second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Uh, Fabian, I. Candido abstain. Carboni, aye. Donahue abstain. Day aye. Trace, did you get all those? I did. Okay, uh, we have a few appointments that we need to do at this point, so uh, let's jump right into this. Uh, first thing is the animal control. So we have um, appointments for the animal control officer and the assistant animal control officers that would expire um, currently April 30th, 2024. So the motion uh, for the reappointments, um, the term would be through April 30th, 2025. So do I hear a motion? Um, I prefer that, you know, whoever makes the motion, just read the name and make a motion. Uh, make a motion to make the following reappointments with all terms to expire April 30, 2025. David Freights, animal, animal control officer slash constable. Darcy Lee, Assistant Animal Control Officer. Ronnie Freights, Assistant Animal Control Officer. Lisa Pinelski, Pinelski. <laughs> Pinelski uh, Assistant Animal Control Officer. And Kathy Seeley, Assistant Animal Control Officer. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Baby and I. Candido, I. Carboni, I. Carboni, I. Aye. They are. Next, um, this is a reappointment uh, for Wilfred Corey as our veteran agent and graves officer. His appointment currently will expire on April 30th, 2024, and this um, reappointment would bring it through April 30th, 2025. Your motion. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? AB and I. And D and Carboni, I. All right. Uh, next appointment would be for Patricia. Now I'll need some help here. Do we know how to say the last name? Mastacaros. Mastacaros as a member of the Council on Aging Board. Attaches a letter from the Council on Aging Board president requesting that Patricia be appointed as a full member uh, due to a vacancy. And she's currently serving as an alternate. And this appointment with a term expiration of July 31st, 2025. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Baby and I. Candy and I. Carboni, aye. Thank you, aye. They are. All right. All right. Uh, next appointments, uh, Michelle Bouchard to the Conservation Commission um, as a full member. And then uh, Brian Anderson as an associate member. So attached is a, a letter uh, submitted by the Conservation Commission supporting the um, the appointments. Uh, I'll just read it briefly. The Conservation Commission currently has an opening for another member. We have reviewed three individuals that expressed interest and submitted resumes for the position. And I believe all of you have um, those resumes here. Chair, possible point of order? Do we have to accept Mark Knox's resignation before we appoint? No, um, they had a vacancy on the commission prior to Thank Mark's you. resignation. Thank you. Okay, um, and then at their meeting on the 26th, the commission voted unanimously to recommend Michelle Bouchard for the appointment for the Conservation Commission, um, and then um, the appointment for Brian as the associate member. So uh, this would be the expiration for Michelle. Um, the term is July 31st, 26th. Um, because this particular vacancy um, expires in, I guess it expired in 2023. And these are staggered, I guess, years. So um, so I guess we'll do that motion first. For Separately? Yes. 
I'd like to make a motion uh, to appoint Michelle Bouchard for the uh, appointment on conservation. Expiration date would be July 31st, 2026. Second? Yep, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? A, B, and I. Candy, no I. Carboni, aye. Donahue, aye. Day, aye. And a motion for um, the associate. I'd like to make a motion for it's an associate. It says here as an associate member. Got it. I'd like to make a motion for Brian Anderson as an associate member of the Conservation Commission. Expiration date July 31st, 2025. Second. All right, motion. Discussion. Oh, yes, please. Um, first of all, I like Brian's background as well. And it seems like he'd be also a good fit for economic development if he'd be interested. Um, but also looking at the form, that, that's not even listed. I don't know if we need to check our form and make sure all of the committees are available or on it. Oh, to update the form? Yeah. It might be, uh, I don't know when we've ever revisited this, but. It could be I'm overlooking or it's just not there for a specific reason. No, it's not. Which one is that? Economic, economic development. development. I'm sure with your powers, um, Brian, you can convince just about anybody to um, dip their toe in the water. It doesn't have parks, right? So. Um, yeah, that's because the parks is elected. Okay. Let's go maybe show so we can take a minute or something just to kind of map it back uh, to make sure that we have all the, the appointed uh, board committees and commissions on our form. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? Maybe not. Andy, do I? Carboni, aye. Thank you, aye. Okay, aye. All right. And next, um, this is never easy to receive um, a resignation from um, any of our commissions, boards, or committees, but um, attaches a letter of resignation um, from Mark Knox um, from the Conservation Commission. Um, I'll read it briefly here. Um, after much deliberation, um, I have decided to resign from my appointed position on the Lakeville Conservation Commission effective immediately. I appreciate my time served and, uh, and hope this letter is received without prejudice. I would like to thank all the board members, past and present, that have committed their personal time and effort to Lakeville. Serving Lakeville has been a rewarding, educational, and meaningful experience, and I am grateful for the opportunity. I also wish all the best to the remaining and future Conservation Commission members, as I know this position comes with great responsibility, stress, and commitment. And with best regards, Mark Knox. So, I mean, I'd personally like to thank Mark for all of his, um, you know, work he's done on the, the Conservation Commission. Um, you know, we don't hear a lot about the Conservation Commission, but they're out there and they're watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they're watching. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks, to, Nancy. Just to add to that, Madam Chair, um, you know, I'm sad to see Mark, you know, go from this board. He's done a lot. He actually, you know, chaired the very complicated 43D. That was something that none of us were around when it came into um, being, but I thought he had done a really good job trying to chair through that. It wasn't a popular thing. So um, I hope Mark comes back in some capacity um, because he handled some of that stuff really, really well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, we don't, we don't necessarily make those laws here, but if our town adopts them at town meeting, we have to follow through with it. And, you know, sometimes we make corrections later on, but, um, you know, I thought that that was a big lift for him, and I appreciate the work that he did on that. You okay? Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, may I? Um, Mark has been on multiple committees um, for at least the last six, seven years. Mm -hmm. um, so he served in lots of capacities and helped out significantly um, and chaired a lot of his positions. Um, I'd like to reach out and say thank you very much for your time you spent and that it's much appreciated um, from all the people that spend their time volunteering and they know you know what it is to spend that time and passion um, doing stuff for the town you love. Mm -hmm. Just to pile on there, I'd like to thank Mark for his time on conservation planning and everything else that he did or still does. 
Um, I got the opportunity to work with him a bit more over the last year and get to know him a little better. And you know, behind the scenes, it was nice to see his enthusiasm and how much he actually did care for the town and was willing to ask hard questions that others usually wouldn't want to. So you know, I hope he gets some good rest, but thinks about coming back and doing something else in the future. Maybe you can work in magic too, buddy. All right, so did you have anything you can say? You guys covered it all. It would be nice, <laughs> but I hope he comes back. Yeah. All right, so all right, I'm going to ask for that very difficult motion. I'll make that motion. I make a motion that we accept Mark Knox's uh, resignation from Conservation Commission. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, roll call, please. Uh, Fabian and I. Candy. Carboni, reluctantly aye. Donahue, aye. They aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right, I just need a quick second here. We left off. All right, number 13. Um, I think this is going to take some discussion. Um, so I would. So we'll, we'll look at this. Chief, if you wouldn't mind, because you're going to be called up at some point anyways, but okay. you might as well grab a seat. So we're going to revisit um, impossible vote to approve the comprehensive emergency management plan. Uh, this came in front of us at our last meeting, um, and the board had decided to um, bring it back with the five-member board because this was you know, a comprehensive plan that we thought that uh, it would be nice to have all five members weigh in on. So I'm asking if everybody had a chance to go through it because it's, what was it, 110 pages. And um, I know I did my homework and I had to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. Ben, sure I had some questions. Um, yeah. I wasn't here, so I'm probably missing out. I don't know. We didn't discuss it. All right. So I, all. Um, I just had a, well, um, my first question was, um, has this been reviewed by KP Law at all? Did this go through the KP Law review? Uh, no, it hasn't. It, the source of this document is basically a template that comes from MEMA, and you plug information into the, to the, uh, into the, the verbiage that they provided to us. It's kind of, it's common for community to okay. um, I would probably make a recommendation to the board to actually maybe have a review on anything that we're doing policy-wise, but that's just an opinion of mine. Um, and second part was, um, you answered some of, some of it because it's a template. Um, what was the working relationship with the other uh, town departments like police and DPW? Because I do see they're mentioned extensively within the document and you're gonna ha they're gonna have to pick a coordinator, they're gonna have specific duties assigned to them, um, what was the process like to get their feedback on this uh, or, or bring this together? So the original document that was provided to the select board that was uh, it generated some comments. Everybody that's named in the in the uh, document, they get a chance to review it. We um, I sent out uh, probably in August. I sent a, a copy to each department head, the convention, and the town administrator at the time, um, and to solicit comments. And so then. Um, the only one, that, the only person that had any comments was uh, Ari. Had some some requests involved. He wanted some. Um, this would be a can of worms. There was really very little uh, responsibilities bestowed on the town administrator within okay. the template, and he wanted to enhance his role in the emergency management plan. Got it. Um, I have a bunch more. They're just little ones, though. No, it's okay. Um, the uh, page 15. Um, on uh, the violations section, I just had a question. If complete meant without violations or violations were resolved? I uh, peeked at the copy there. We were running around and I, and I didn't get back to the office. You said 15? Yes, page 15, I think it had. It was talking about violations. Um, I 
that's not what we have on page 15. Oh, well, that means I can't I even read my own writing. No, I have page 15 here, the uh, technological, technological has hazards. Yes. But that's not what... That's not what I had. I had violations that's like not what for um, the facilities. Yeah, that's right here. Right? Isn't this it? Yeah. Do we have multiple 15s? No. Um, no, but this is what you're referring to, right? I am. It's the same page. Yeah. What does yours say? Transport, technical jump. Let's skip that for now. I'll move on. Um, but if we can, while we're there, is there a reason why this needs to be included in this document? I mean, if, if there's a list kept on file um, at the Lakeville Fire Department, would this list need to be included in the plan? Because this is changing, because this will change, and I know yeah. Your plan for this particular document is to be able to update it and have the freedom to be able to add, um, you know, as things move. But um, so, so not being um, basically handed this uh, this document, basically my understanding is is that this was called for in the template, and that's why it was included. Okay. Um, I don't see. I don't. I mean, we, if we choose to remove that, that's fine. I don't see uh, any statutory requirement for it to be in there. And we do maintain a, a, a right to know list at the fire department. So there's no, no heartache with leaving it out as far as I'm concerned. Because I, I mean, I'm just looking at this as, you know, this is, um, you know, a document that says, hey, can we look at your comprehensive emergency plan? You pull it off the shelf, they can look at it. And, and if accurate. they get to this part and said, oh, this list is kept on file at the Lakeville Fire Department, so we could, you know, pull that list. Be if more needed. accurate if it referred you to the fire department? Right, it would be more real time, I would okay. think. Oh, it makes sense to me. Yes. Um, once approved, does the final copy of this have to be filed and kept on record with the state? And because then they would not have access to this information should they need something at a regional level. So this has already been signed off on MEMA, mm -hmm. uh, and, and since it's modified from the from the from the from them being okay with it, mm -hmm. I'd have to resubmit it back to them. But I don't see them giving us a hard time. Well, my my question being, are we still part of Region Two with them? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Region 2 of MEMA covers a number of municipalities down here. I don't know if they need to have access to a, you know, all their region's plans and have a comprehensive list of everything in the area um, or not, if there was ever a regional situation. I, How I is the know. document shared? Is it, um... it's, it's specific to us. The, 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 the benefit of this document is the template means that somebody comes in mutual aid, they, they know where to look in the document for the information they need, so there's uh, uniformity from town to town, and that's basically what they're looking for versus a shared document. There's actually a, SEMP, a statewide SEMP, which is the, the master plan for the state, and then each community is supposed to have their own. So it's it's um, it's really not it's not specific for Lakeville, but what they care about is the structure and the, the, the adherence to the template. So somebody coming in from the outside would know where to look at our plan for information. Okay. I guess that there's the common theme throughout this whole document. Um, you know, are we providing any information that would be considered a liability on the town? Um, I, maybe that could be answered by KP Law going to the previous suggestion. Page 19 would be my yeah. my concern yeah. on that. Um, and again, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm all set. I just figured. I yes. No, and again, they, they they wanted to 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 let us know that it's it's um, there's certain requirements and structure and flows of authority that they insist upon. Um, but what we include and what we don't include is our decision. Got it. Okay. Um, the next question is around the term chief municipal officer. Yeah. Which yeah. Mm -hmm. never heard that used in the context before. Um, in this document, it cites the chair of the select board as the chief municipal officer. I would assume if we adopted that, we would have to give some special powers to the chair as a chief municipal officer. Because right now there's two distinctions. There's chief administrative officer, which is the TA, and chief executive officer, which is the board of selectmen. Um, but there is no title called no, chief municipal no. officer. Yeah, I but then it so, yeah. yeah, but then it switches mm -hmm. in page 87 to chief uh, elected official, yeah. which, which is, is another point. yeah, which is another term and mm -hmm. like. Yeah. So, so there is no definition, and I've looked for that definition, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think if we modify that, it's not the end of the world for us to modify. Um, but as, as far as the chief executive officer, it, it is defined in Mass General Law. I think it, it's section, uh, chapter four, section seven, defines what that is. 
and, and like in a mayor uh, type of government, it's the mayor, yep. and it says shall shall be the mayor. And then, as far as our form of government, it says the select board, or yes, uh, and that's as it. opposed to the chair. Yeah. it's the the board in its totality. So logistically, right. they always kind of lean on the chair because it's difficult to to get leadership from five people at once yep. if I'm sitting in an EOC. Yep. So that's kind of the practicality side of it. Yeah, but that would be something that is not within our current so, rules and bylaws, so we would have to create it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing, too, is that we can, if we had a town charter, we can specify who that person is. Or if we had a town manager, that, that person can be appointed as the as that yep. chief executive officer. Okay. But, we, but we have an administrator, so. So we probably want to wordsmith that a little. No. The, the key to the, the, I spoke to Mima today, and they said, please emphasize to your board that this is a fluid document. It's not binding. And acceptance is, acceptance isn't, isn't the, the very next day is the time to amend inaccurate or any information that needs to be updated. Um, you know, so they, they, they were kind of emphasizing the fact that, you know, I was kind of telling them about the process going along and they were, they were saying like, it's, this isn't, uh, we're not adopting law here. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a plan that, that basically it's more about the way we should should conduct business. It's almost more of a bench part, benchmark. Um, this is what we should strive to be, and and we should improve the plan as we go through experiences like flooding and, and all these disasters and things that are missing in our plan. Like that's the time to evaluate it and change it. And we log our changes and then we come back in five years and we make it part of the official document. Um, the, uh, the this uh, Mr. Viveros was like. He's like, uh, he was trying to be like, God, tell him not to sweat it. I'm like, I'm not saying that. <laughs> um, and, you know, you know we'll, we'll change it the next day if something's not right. And uh, I'm like, I'm not saying that either. <laughs> um, but uh, so that, that's basically the spirit I'm trying to communicate to you. Um, I don't have any hardship with doing any of these things as far as KP law. It's not a, we have a, we have an outdated stamp to follow. If we do have an incident. So it's just whatever you guys, whatever gets you to a comfortable place. I'm happy to do it. Okay. And then my last question was just kind of what you were alluding to from around page 46 on when it was talking about um, the powers vested. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like a little bit of overreach um, for what we're tasked with. Um, so that made me a little concerned that we're, we're signing up for something that we don't have the powers to actually execute. So that's where my thoughts are yeah. on that whole section. Um, and this is definitely a, a template thing. This is not something I understand. Understood. Yeah. Made, made clear. But those are just my broad talking points. Most of the things that I have are repetitive for the same points over and over again. But yeah, so I appreciate you uh, you letting me understand a little bit more how that came about. I hope I helped you understand that. I no, understand no, that. <laughs> um, I think one of the corrections I had sent in, Chief, was to add Assawampsit. Is there a reason why we didn't add Assawampsit under the special facilities? Or am um, I looking at an old copy? Maybe it's an old copy, or maybe um, in the confusion of all the edits, okay. I left it out. But we um, should. I thought it was in here. Was it? Maybe I missed it, but I mean, I Because Aponiquit's, yeah, Aponiquit's on page 17, and then the other schools are on page 18, Freetown Lakeville Middle School, George R. Austin. Is it helpful for you? Or it might be helpful for me. I'll, I'll rephrase it. Um, when I put a shared Word document, is that a violation of open meetings? If I put a shared Word document out for you guys to access and comment on? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. Hard to do some real work around here. Because <laughs> that's really convenient for you guys to direct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Direct comment on something to me. Nope. Because even though, um, if just with what um, Member Fabian said. I had a note here. Do these actually need to be listed in this document? Because I felt that that might have been a liability thing. On which page? Um, the the school facilities. Yeah. yeah and the well, I mean, the idea is to break this plan out and, and potentially have people there that aren't familiar with the town assisting us. And so it may seem obvious to us, but it, it's not so obvious to somebody that's not familiar with the town. So this is this document is, is just more destined to be a higher level. You have your standard um, operating procedure SOPs when a particular incident occurs, uh, but this is more just a generalization of we have a plan in place, and we've touched upon those key elements that need to be addressed for the plan. So I'm going to say something I'm to say. This is more for me about 
being able to score better on, on okay. maybe an application or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I was going to say, yeah, I, yeah. and I, I think yeah. I think that's why um, at the last meeting when I had made my comments because it we could potentially need to ask for grants for flooding, which is a problem that's ongoing. Um, that's why I was hoping we could make it, and at which it, you did change it to include such as a flooding event right on page. I think that says. Well, but I can't see that little, little vision problem today. Um, so that that Not could possibly you have to specify that. Yeah. <laughs> so that could possibly this document could possibly assist right. with getting yep. grants in the future, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Member Day, you've had experience in this because I believe you worked in the. You did. Yeah. So. All right. So I'd, I'd be interested to hear some of your. I thought, I mean, it's a template document, it looks good overall. I appreciate it already done for the funding budget. That's nice. Um, I already shared this with the chief, so it wouldn't be a surprise for him. Um, my, my takeaway actually kind of trails on what Member Candido said, which is there's a lot of, and no disrespect to our current chair, there's a lot of stuff put on the chair, the chair, the chair. Yeah. And, and I really feel like that changes. We're all supposed to be equal members, right, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Like this in docs, this chair signs, it does agenda. I feel like that really, for us, should be the town administrator so that it's the same as it normally is. And like, if there's something bigger that comes up, we can get a meeting together within two business days or if there's an emergency quicker. But uh, it just, it felt like it was a real change in our daily operational works to just suddenly say, oh, forget we have a TA, we're just gonna go over the chair and put it on that. Right. And one of the things I added, um, I added my own language was, was specifying that he would liaison between the executive with the three different things they yeah. call the, the executive <laughs> officer uh, within the template. So it's for practicality purposes for me. Um, you know, uh, in a real world, late goal, I'm going to be I'm responding on calls, so it's very difficult to make five phone calls or five text messages. Yep. And working through the TA would be very beneficial to me operationally. Oh, absolutely. So it should be that. I mean, where it says that, can't we just write in? Town yep. administrator? Yep. I, yep, yep. Absolutely. Right. Um, uh, there is some, I mean, there's some weird language in the master on law when I'm, we were, I was trying to look, look up and research this, um, but it does specify that, that the elected board can, spec can designate somebody. Yeah, so we would just have to vote the, um, for the purposes of emergency, comprehensive emergency management plan um, that the this means so and so. Correct. Yep. That works. That works. Um, under the Emergency Operations Center, it says the emergency management director or designee will ensure the equipment in the EOC is functional and ready to support an activation. The equipment includes laptops, phones, monitors, smart boards, radios, and base stations. Mm -hmm. Is this something we already have or something we have to purchase to stock the center with? Yeah, there's, um, it's basically, you know, uh, the, the police department has, has modern technology that we have built, so there's there's already the IT is in there, and we have radios that we use every day that can be applied for those purposes, or we all have town laptops and things like that. So um, there's really no hidden expenses related to this. Okay. You, you, um, man. sorry, I heard over here first. Okay. I was just going to say to Bernard's point, which is excellent, is that in a perfect world, you do have a locked rack of gear ready to go so that if something happens you're not worrying about oh i left my laptop in my office i got to go there oh it's on the other side of the flood etc you know so when we worked at the state eoc we had a rolling cart full of 48 laptops already charged already updated ready to go you pulled them out you signed in and off you went just so everybody knew it was all just process 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 you know wheel out the lunch cart grab a laptop and go so that you know whoever was coming in from police didn't have to go find their gear, whoever's coming in from National Guard, go find their, it was just all provided. Mm -hmm. What was your, what was your ESF number? I was four. I was four for the state of Alaska. I still have my old badge. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there was a por portion in there, sorry, just to follow up on yours, there was a portion in there that said they would be able to, um, I forgot the wording, but it was like command assets from the town. I was like, wow, Mike's <laughs> taken over this town. <laughs> Mike's taken over. <laughs> but, Very important. But um, yeah, we should have a list of, you know, stuff designated to your point so doesn't the police station that bigger conference room not the community room but isn't there the other conference room where I thought we had some 
is conferencing uh, tools like uh, voice, like video conferencing and voice conferencing. Yeah. So, um, Brenda, have you ever been into that room, the smaller room, no. the interrogation no. room? Yeah. Yeah. So there's right <laughs> off of the lobby. There is a there that other. It almost looks like a wall, but you know, I would just make an appointment with the chief and ask him yeah. to show you the. The, 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 the places the best tool for for me is is really my my local coordinator for Mima. I have him on cell phone he answers and he kind of takes care of everything for me because of the, the lack of uh, the lack of capability or capacity on my part to do those things and then the other big big tool is something called web EOC which is a, a, a web-based platform for, for for me maintaining my situational awareness around the state and also requesting assets uh, electronically so um, it comes in, it creates, it, oh, it basically populates a log for the town of Lakeville. It tracks all our requests, it tracks all our events. And so when you get into the reimbursement stage later on, it's, it's there, it's permanent record, it's time stamped, and, and, it, and it's a great, it's something I keep open in my car and, and watch and, and, and make requests in real time. Madam Chair, I just okay. want to make a comment. I, don't, I know a lot of select board members know, but I don't know if everyone knows. Um, Mike's worked very hard, or Chief O'Brien, has worked very hard okay. in making sure he has a great working relationship um, with the emergency responders, and we posted um, them in Lakeville, um, and that's two-part, just to you know get, get us familiar with that. But he also has people be familiar with the town, which is very helpful um, to be able to see you know what's going on in town and continue to foster that relationship. Um, it's been something that I think has really benefited the town or could potentially benefit the yeah. town in the case of emergency. Thank you. So we already voted in the past that we were going to adopt a, a comprehensive emergency management plan. So we already have one. So the vote here tonight, because we have to have some kind of a, a final document, and I know each one of us has notes all over yeah. so how would you suggest it can i give each member an electronic copy not web-based not shared um have them put their their track change comments up on that document and have me um kind of yield a final product for for consideration that's fine right that works for me mm -hmm. that works for me Brenna? and would when we, we have that final product submit law. to kp law and mima for approval okay so once that's all Set, and then it'll come back to this board for a final final draft final okay. final a final Fine. final it's, okay, so like what I is said, your, we have, we, it's, there's not a deadline here so right. we can get it right well I'd like to make sure that we had some kind of a dead I'd hate for this to just end up in air and then all of a sudden come back and we haven't done so um, I would say by town meeting okay which was June no I appreciate might it might be a good timeline to okay. kind of target yeah I had given um, the chief uh, a bunch of mine. I forgot one of the asses. So, <laughs> um, so I probably don't have much more. So okay. Um, you know, we can work with everybody um, else. Send yours. Just send me an electronic copy. Yeah. And I'll... Same here. All right. Um, so Member Fabian can just take some more time off. Um, <laughs> you'll have less homework to do. <laughs> so if you, yeah, if you wouldn't mind just sending that out. Not at all. Not at all. That would be great. Thank, Thank you, you very it. much. Thank you. I learned a lot, actually. I'm glad. I'm glad. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Next order of business, um, we have something that um, comes up periodically, something called Chapter 61. Um, I know that this, over the last year, the uh, select board and the administration had worked to put together uh, a policy or procedure, I guess would be more correct, would be more procedure. So, um, you know, when a particular you know, property was in Chapter 61 land, um, whether it's agricultural or recreational, and it comes out of Chapter 61 land, what happens and how does it pass through uh, the proper, uh, you know, boards and committees of decision makers, I guess. And so at this point, um, we had identified 
something that would be useful uh, to the select board, and that would be a status report um, each year to the select board. And the Board of Assessors, my understanding, um, has a listing of all the land um, that is in chapter land, chapter 61 land, correct? If Mr. Oliver, if you'd like to come up. State your name and your address for the record, please. Just John Oliveri. I'm here on behalf of the Board of Assessors. I live in Lakeville, Massachusetts. Woodland Ridge Drive. Thank you for coming in tonight. My pleasure, Madam Chair. Uh, so again, this um, request, I think, because we said, oh, how, what land is in chapter land? And how do we know when it's in chapter land or if it's coming out of chapter land? So it would be nice for this board to have a report from the assessor's office. I'm not sure at what time of year, I guess that would be a decision of this board, um, when that report would be most, I guess, useful or beneficial? Uh, we can do whatever you want is the short answer. So I've already checked with um, RRG, who is our principal assessor, um, or acts as our principal assessor, and they, are, they have the ability to give you that report whenever you would like it. Yes, we do track that. Um, and it's not much more to add. So you let us know what you want, and we will make sure we are able to provide you with that. Yes, please, will you? Um, I believe it's October that um, people get recertified for Chapter yes. 61. Yes, and the um, way you come out of it is you don't reapply. You yep. don't pull out in the middle of the year. You, you wait till the next year. You don't submit your application. And we do keep track of those who did not. So it's, it's a very simple, routine process for us to put in place. Okay. Um, it, it, may I ask that like we get a report along with a map um, and all of the parcels and acreage included. On you can that. always ask whatever you want for me. It doesn't mean you're always going to get it. But in this no, it case, really does. Yes. In this case, you, you will get that, all that information. I so. appreciate it. Um, but can we get that probably in like November of every year? Um, just, just in the sake of timeliness to understand um, when everything is re-upped? Right. Okay. No problem. Um, all right. Yes, I was going to... Um, in addition to whatever can be does that, I think it'd be really useful to Board of Assessors drives a lot of our GIS updates and the different layers that they create mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. If we could actually figure out a way to throw a few bucks their way to create a 61 layer so that we could just pull up your assessor's database and just oh. click a box and the map Candido asked for is overlaid over everything else. Because I think sometimes we get into these discussions when land is coming out, we all kind of you know sit in a circle and say, well, is there any value of this land to the town? And if you can just quickly go and look at it and say, oh, it abuts this, it connects these conservation areas, whatever it might be. Even better than a map is having a, a access. document, yeah, an access. Or, or then maybe it helps drive conversations with open space to know what those are and go talk to those landowners and say, hey, if you ever think of selling, it just seems yeah. like something we're missing. If it pleases the board, if we can um, maybe direct our town administrator to work with the assessors to come up with, um, you know, what that cost would look like. Yeah, that's again easy enough for us to find out what that additional way would be. I don't think it's going to be anything drastic. So. Yeah. I mean, you've got the system. You've got the great suggestion. The platform. I think we might as well try to use it to its fullest capacity. So. All right. Um, anybody else have anything on that? Because so we're we're looking toward November to have a, a just a list. Well, okay. What I will do is I will um, check with the staff to find out what particular time would be the best for us to get yep. that out to. But the goal would be at some point in November, whether it's yep. November first, December first, November fifteenth. But it sounds like uh, yep. which makes a lot of sense. Right after that process has happened this board would like to know, all right, who's who's not in anymore. Yeah. And then we'd obviously like one now as well. Yeah. But what is it what is it report? I mean, what are we looking for in that report? Just um, so the people haven't renewed their chapter. Right, but what are you looking for? Are you looking for the amount of land that is in that chapter for that property? Are we just looking for the property map block and lot? Are we looking for um, I would say status of the lot because even if they take it out there is a five-year period where they might have to pay full yeah. tax before roll they back. have to pay it back tax back tax not the right word roll back, roll back. yeah 
you know, so I think that report should at least, even if they drop out, continue to include those parcels for five full years so that if we get into one of these conversations again, we're not all going, oh, have they paid one year or two years? Right. Like mm -hmm. we just the change of use. Look or at it, right? One's, one was the change of use. Was the change of use for the whole thing part of the thing? What's the assessed value? Yeah. What's the tax yeah. value? So what we probably do it. is starting on this first report. I mean, obviously initially we can give you what we have now, but yeah. we want to. We'll go back as far as the rollback taxes would become in effect. So we use this coming <coughs> November as an example. You'll we'll provide you with, and I believe we can do this. Not only the stuff that's coming out this year, but also for the past three, four years, whatever it is, what has come out. Again, I'm, I'm assuming we do, we do track that. It should be easy enough for us to get. So then it will be a rolling list, and as fourth or fifth year drops off, the properties can come off the list because at that point yeah. they're just traditional yeah. regular okay. lots at that point or properties. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we also have a pony? No. Come on. <laughs> no. Wrong committee. <laughs> Wrong committee. <laughs> Madam so Chair. So we have a committee in town that can take care of that, but not us. Madam Chair, I'm going to head out. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm glad you came in, Thanks. Leah, really. Thank you. All right, so um, you know whatever you can get to us for now, and then we'll, you know, we'll do the report in November too. We'd just like to see what, what what's. Yeah, not a problem. We'll work on getting that together within the next week or so. We'll get you the initial report, and then we'll get back to you on date specific as to when we will target to do that each year. Okay, perfect. Do we need to formalize this in a vote, or can we just um, right? I mean, it does say discuss and possible vote, but um, I don't know that it requires a vote. I don't think so. I don't think it does a require a vote. Now. You're asking another board to do, yeah, put something in place. So yeah. even if you took the right. vote and we decided not to, we could just have a battle between boards. But I can assure you, we will give that to you. Well, I suppose if we uh, had to throw a pony in there, we'd probably have to have a, a vote. But um, yeah, you would need a vote, vote for the pony. Okay. All right. So um, I think we're still talking assessors here. So um, updates on the existing chapter 61 procedures um, to account for land with no third party purchase and sales agreement currently in place. I'm going to uh, defer back to um, yeah, it, member. Thank you, Madam Chair. So th this came up recently where there was land presented to the board as an opportunity. Um, when the original chapter 61 procedures were created, it was all based on what had historically come before the town, which was a piece of land uh, that was being converted. So we got a notice of intent to take it out of chapter or a, we were provided notice that there was a purchase and sale on the property, something that would have triggered our right of first refusal. Recently, property came before us where there was no notice of intent and there was no purchase and sale in place. So everybody said, what do we do now? Because it doesn't fit the, you know, the mold that we had before us. So uh, this item was really just to discuss we need, we need something else in the flow chart. So the first couple of steps where it says like, how did it come in? Where do you go next? It's just figure out what the, okay, here's the third method it could have come in. What do we do next? Who do we notify? Who do we get together, et cetera. Uh, I don't have suggestions on what that is, but that was kind of how we came up with the topic. So it might be a working group of some kind. Or right. The good thing about this particular um, you know, procedures, it, it, it's fluid because, you know, things like this come up. So, um, I guess, I mean, we looked at the administration last time to say, <laughs> you put together a, a procedure for us. And um, so I guess we can certainly look to the administration to, uh, you know, include that. Yeah, I think the assistant to the town administrator is heavily involved in the first creation. Yep. So perhaps you'd be willing to take a look. I had some comments or questions. If, if it is going to go to her, I will direct them to her. It's just about timelines and about, um, you know, just being more specific in some, there's some vague language. So it's just language based. It's not really. Well, I think any time that, um, you know, if you have, I mean, any time we can bring a policy in front of this board to review um, for comments and um, with the new adopt, you know, adopted date, obviously. But so this would be an addition to the policy. So I mean, certainly, 
Because I know this is your first time, you know, on the board yep. with this and, and being able to, you know, take a look at the policy. So, um, because the board obviously would have to be a have a vote to it. So, um, perhaps maybe you can meet with um, Mr. Noons and maybe go over the things that you're looking to yep. change. So when it comes back to us with the addition, I think they would be called. Party, I think they would be more called administerial uh, changes, not materially changing it. So I don't even know that you'd need a vote. It's just some language. So, okay. I will. Okay. So, I mean, I'll I know that this more is, visits. I mean, there's a lot happening this month. We have, um, you know, quite a few me meetings for budget. So I'm not saying that this needs to jump at the, the you know, top of that, that pile. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I would say by, you know, sometime. June. July. June. Okay. Into June the month of May. Just yeah. something. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, if there's one more. So also coming in front of us this evening, uh, there was a change in um, staffing and hours uh, in the assessor's office. And so um, I'd like to invite our HR director to the table. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and talk a little bit about um, you know, what we have in front of us this evening. Okay, so we had put out um, a full-time Board of Assessors office assistant. Um, we had kind of a change in the office where our full-time uh, assessor specialist had retired, and so we replaced that with a part-time field assessor, and then we got the full-time office assistant in order to ensure that our office hours were going to be the same as the rest of the um, town offices so that 8 to 4 30 every day um, with that we got one internal applicant which was our current part-timer Linda um, the she's fully qualified she's been doing it for seven years so realistically the the job description isn't changing it's more of her going from part-time to full-time. And when I did submit the office assistant, there was a few additional tasks that she would be doing um, as being that, that full-time person. So her rate after the seven years of being part-time was, um, hold on, I just had it 10 seconds ago. Uh, it was 24.02. Um, the starting pay for the full-time position is 1967 so the request is to actually start her at a higher step which would be comparable to what she would be ranked now um, in the starting pay would be the 2374 so it's still less than what she was be was getting as a part-timer but it would be on board where she should be um, and I did look and it's already in that FY25 budget. So when I spoke about us having those positions and it's still being $20,000 less to have the office assistant full-time and the field assistant part-time, I'm, I'm, we're still tracking on that uh, $20,000 savings. Are you meaning the, the FY24 budget? Nope, the, current FY, budget? the 25 budget. So in 24, we had allocated for a full-time assessor specialist right. and a part-time right. clerk. When we go to 2025, we had actually built it, or I should say the Board of Assessors had built it as being a part-time um, field assistant in a full-time office. So it's already built into the budget with that uh, $20,000 and we addressed this at town meeting in the fall, correct? If I remember correctly, I remember seeing the the article. Yeah, in I'll, my I'll mind. Pop, since I'm not okay. <laughs> so yes, we did. We talked to this board uh, prior to town meeting, and we explained that at the end of the day, because of the retirement coming up, um, when we made this switch, that it would benefit uh, financially for okay. that board. And this, it, what's happening now, it's, it's coming to the point where the part time it did um, did um, excuse me. The full time retired and came back as part time, and now that part time needs to go to full time. And 
the reason it went to town meeting is because we needed to start this ahead of time in order to get her up to speed with some of the additional items and whatnot that she was going to be doing so um, I don't know if it's escaped me when would the position effectively start when would she start full-time in this position did I miss it here so no nope. um, we haven't submitted the offer based off of okay understanding if we're offering it at the rate of the 1967 or if we're right. offering it at that level increase okay um and then as soon as we offer it she can start okay so it would be effective whatever that start date would be yes okay all right Question yeah. um i'm assuming um everything going through and everything's predicated um i've never promoted anyone from part-time to full-time and given them a decrease in pay yeah so I spoke with um, Linda about it and in July of 2024 with the three percent increase she's actually then above the 2402 so instead of holding her back she would get with the she would stay with that three percent increase which would bring her i believe to like 24 and 19 or something okay so when the three percent yes comes in so on in july. top of the 20 okay. right. right she'll be she'll be tracking all right so the, there'd be a couple of few months here yes at the okay but and then you got to look the at that i had to the the added benefits of when you're switching from part-time to full-time now you have you know the health insurance you Understood. have the vacation so uh, it does sure. compensate for um you know that 20 something cents less i enjoy the three percent more than the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i'll entertain a motion um uh, make a motion to authorize the hr director to offer the full-time board of assessor office assistant to linda pendergrass at a rate of 23.74 level four step six based on her experience 23.74 what yes. did i say 22, did i 22 23.74 the number Lacey gave us. <laughs> second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, roll call, please. Candido, aye. Carboni, aye. Donahue, aye. Day, aye. All right, it's all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone here? No. All right. I think last um, one of our previous meetings we had three uh, requests for public way licenses in front of us uh, so this evening we have one um, to approve a, a public way license application for Tour de Creme I'd like to speak a little Very French impressive. There, Creme. Um, bike ride fundraiser which would be scheduled for May 19th 2024 um and they are also asking for a request to waive the fee uh the fee currently is 250 dollars um and looking at this uh, i believe it looks like everything in here has been submitted tracy would say that this would be a full submittal correct yeah. yep okay so, I had a question, Madam yes. Chair. Just informational for the $250 application fee. What is it that we would be waiving or are we to waive this fee? It says that they have flag men, so I'm assuming some of it was police presence, but is some of it also DPW cleaning up and making sure um, there's no trash prior to, trash after? I'm, uh, my understanding, I mean, um, member day i'm sure you can help fill me in from you know previous mm. uh last year but um the fees that we had in place would be supporting the, those yeah it seems like the so. police isn't an issue but trash is still an issue that's my only concern because i know our dpw director goes out goes the whole race route prior to anything going on in town and then mm -hmm. does it again after any type of races to ensure the, the, if I may, the, the fee was supposed to include the time and materials for DPW to do that, those kind of inspections before and after. Right? We don't specifically call it out in Section 5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'm also kind of surprised with 100 riders there isn't a police presence of some kind. This police detail shows at zero. I mean, that's not a small number of people. Because a lot of these are all nonprofit anyways that do come in front of us. Um, so. They've done it before. That was my next question. Yeah, I don't recall. I don't this recall particular this group, particular group. They have been. I don't yes, think they've, they've been. They've been in a couple of times. Okay. Through this I, town or just other locations? Through our town. I think they the did. Way yeah. Okay. There's yeah. no issues. No, it's not a race. It's just a bunch of people riding from one ice cream stand okay. to another. I like the concept. <laughs> mm, it's pretty cool. So they're probably staggered. They're probably not moving as a hundred-person group because. They're going to want to separate into groups. Right. Um, um, I could be persuaded to uh, waive it if they try to make it right and make sure that they're, you know, um, looking after and making sure the streets are clean and there's no litter but left behind. I mean, I could see that if it is, you know, the staggered. And yeah. It is a small race compared to the other yeah. ones that we see in yeah. town. It looks like just a nice, you know, day ride out, and, you, know, you know, for good cause. All right, well, we'll see. I was just going to ask if Tracy knows, because precedent matters too, do we, have we waived fees for any other nonprofits in the past? No one has requested it. And they said we've waived fees for five years, but we've only have fees for just a few four right? years, Wasn't it three years. I think we instituted fees about four years ago. They've done this. They've done this race for five years. Okay. Um, but they before we didn't have the public use way application, and they I, they did. Um, they're, so they're saying that no town had requested payment. You know. Yeah. In the past five years, so this was a first for them. They weren't even aware they had to get this. So um, that's why they called that out. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Um, I'll make the motion to accept the application <clears throat> with the fee reduced to two hundred and fifty dollars, on the contingents or on the contingent that is, there is no um, significant trash cleanup or other issues that would, you know, require those funds. Just for point of clarification, yeah. um, to waive the fee or not um, reduce it to two fifty because reduce it's, it to two fifty because it is because it is two fifty yeah. The fee so is they the want base. To pay, they want to pay zero. Right. The base fee is two fifty. The normal fee is five hundred, and then nonprofits get it reduced to two fifty oh, automatically. Okay. I apologize. So they're, That's so okay. they're requesting That's okay additional. Okay, it's so they're requesting confusing. nothing. Correct. Correct. Okay. Oh, well, that's different than I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you were on such a good yeah, roll well, there. I'll, I'll make the motion to accept it with the fee waived. I mean, it's a bunch of people riding ice cream or riding bikes to get ice cream. It's, um, if there's been no issues before, I don't see a reason to make a stink now. I have a motion. I'll second the motion. And I have a second. Any further discussion? All right. Roll call vote, please. Candido, do I. Carboni, aye. Donahue, aye. Day, aye. All right. We will have now more money for ice cream. Yeah, I'll be waiting if you guys can Yeah, maybe they'll send us. <laughs> we need that kickback, right? <laughs> well, maybe the Mattapoisett Land Trust and the Friends of the Mattapoisett Bike Path get $250 more. <laughs> True. Um, speaking of that, have any of you ever gone on a bike ride? That bike path in particular. No. Oh, it's fantastic. Don't go, people at home. Don't go. You won't like it. <laughs> but it's fantastic. It goes from Fairhaven all the way through to the wharf in Mattapoisett. Wow. Um, and you go by estuaries and you go by like rivers and you're right on the beach nice. and a nice little golf course. It's gorgeous. Hmm. If only, if only we had something like that going, going, up, going up, by our town. beautiful scenic <laughs> ponds in town. Or Betty's neck bike path yep. or something. I like yep. it. Lovely. I'm hearing it. Okay, uh, moving on to committee updates. Um, Mr. Nunes, anything on the Senior Center Addition Feasibility Study? I know we talked a little bit about the... Uh, the addition. The addition, yep. but yep. anything more than that? Nope. Okay. Uh, Fire Station Building Committee, are, we're meeting tomorrow evening. 
uh, 6.30 at the police station. Um, after our vote to uh, support the recommendation by the fire station building committee uh, for site location, I neglected to request um, a letter be sent to the Parks Commission from the select board. So if I have your support, I'd like to um, ask if our town administrator would uh, draft a letter uh, to please notify the, um, the Parks Commission that um, the recommendation did come from the fire station and the select board did support and that we will continue to um, inform the Parks Commission as you know, the project progresses, um, should there be any changes or updates, I guess. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes. I have a question on fire when you're done. I'm done. Okay. Um, it's a question, I don't know if it's an ask, but to date or going forward, do you anticipate the committee discussing the reuse, demolition, abatement, et cetera, of the existing facilities? Because I feel like that could be another large project if we just kind of potentially move out and leave it there. You know, what, what are we going to do? I don't think that's in it's scope. It's not in the, tr in the charge or the scope of, the, of that committee. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it's certainly something that, you know, this board could entertain adding in there, but um, at this point, if there was no... No ask for that. Yeah, right. Okay. I well, mean, maybe that's something that would come from this particular board, or maybe there's a, um, a one-off subcommittee that would be looking at that should that come like we did with the library mm -hmm. uh, there was a library reuse subcommittee that was formed yeah. uh, madam chair is there any capacity in the budget to do a change order um, in the existing budget that you're working with um, um, have, have they reached capacity are they even um, we're going to be discussing the budget tomorrow evening um, there was two hundred and twenty thousand dollars allocated um, for the initial phase of the um, the project so I'm not quite sure I don't think we're anywhere close to that yet but um, we yeah. could be creeping so to your close. point Brian if we wanted to create an additional set of criteria or okay. something that else that they could possibly work on um, to add to the scope maybe we could do that with the additional capacity as long as the wording suits what we voted in at town meeting if it's all tied in but I'm not 100% sure because I don't have the wording in front yeah. of me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, th I think through you, ma'am, the, the wording I think was specifically for the schematic design of a new station. Right. And I think correct. we're scoped only to that. Right. But the, I don't know if I want to call it the next phase of the existing facilities concerns me because that could be a hefty chunk of change and we have absolutely no idea what's going to happen to that besides having to probably continue to heat it for unknown right. amounts of money. Or yeah. And the, I remember um, when the vote came before Sorry, Madam Chair. No, that's fine. Uh, the vote came before the town for the town hall. Um, there was talk of some demolition costs that they had talked about briefly, mm -hmm. but it was very light compared to what I think it's going to be. Yeah. And forgive me, but I'm not sure about the in the feasibility study if they even included that. I'd have to go back and look because I don't think that I don't believe narrowed that. I don't believe in the on last that. two did. Yeah. I don't think so, they did. Which is a I mean huge, that's a key element. It's a huge miss not to be able to talk about what the impact of moving the fire station and repurposing of the space or demolishing yeah. the space, yeah, space is because, uh, you know, if this project is X million, this is X million plus. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. So let's think on that um, and see, you know, come back to the, the table next time we do um, updates sure. and, and maybe we'll, because I'd like to resonate with that a little bit. Maybe the committee has myself. I'd like to take myself out of the fire station building committee and out of select board role and kind of look at it from a, a rational yep. and reasonable perspective. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come back. We'll revisit. Um, okay. I know that. All right. Go ahead. Um, Brian, you're on the old colony, right? Yeah. So no new updates, but for uh, members Donahue and Candido, for where that stands is there is a OPM on board now. Um, so now they will be going before the state on, I believe, April 23rd and May 7th to select an architect. So there was three architects that responded to the request for services. Uh, so they're going to go through, oh shoot, what is it? DSP, Designer Selection Process, I think it's called. And by May 7th, they should have an architect on board. Um, all three firms, the, o the OPM was very excited to see the three that did 
did apply. Um, they've all done um, similar educational buildings in the area. Um, Bristol Plymouth, one example, Diamonds, another example, and a few others. Um, so by May 7th, they should have the architect on board, and then the first deliverable for the architect will be to come up with a um, PSP? I'm going to get the acronym wrong. The first, the first step is they come up with a design that basically says, if we were going to do an addition, here's what it would be. If we were going to do a renovation, here's what it would be. If it's going to be a full build, here's what it would be. And they present those to the committee. The committee kind of discusses, comes up with the, the recommendation, and then sends that recommendation up to the state. And then the state will come back and either say, consider some more things, or you're approved, now let's talk, start talking budgetary numbers and such. But um, May 7th will really be the next big update, okay. and the building committee is meeting that, that evening as well. So they're actually going to pick the architect and then drag them down 24 and have a meeting that night to introduce them to all of us and, and start talking. Okay. That was just for you. Um, I don't know the timeline for the project. Do, is there, has there been discussion? Early, early estimates are if, if things go according to schedule, which, you know, that works in government, um, anywhere from 12 to 18 months before they're coming to the member towns looking for funding. Okay. And the okay. the high water mark that they submitted to the state was $220 million, depending on how many programs they add. So currently they're looking to add, their desire would be to add um, HVAC. HVAC and plumbing because they don't have those. So they can't consider themselves a full construction school unless they add those two. Um, dental assistant and biotech were the other two possibilities, but at, okay. at the moment they've hit the cutting room floor. Okay. Wow. So. Um, I know that this, uh, we've been extended the opportunity for uh, a tour, mm -hmm. um, so I know we'll, we'll still work on that. I know I didn't look at my calendar yet to see, but um, I, I absolutely it's be interested it. in, yeah. in taking a look. So um, I, I was able to have one with um, Director Superintendent Polanski when I came back on the board last year, and um, it, it's worth seeing if you haven't, yeah. and then looking at what they have compared to what the state regulations actually are. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, thank you. Um, I ask that um, going forward, uh, because we did have a uh, another uh, committee formed, which was the Town Administrator Search Committee, uh, to be included in the updates. Uh, so they haven't been brought together yet. Uh, so we're just going to leave that for now. Uh, but know that it's on here and that you know we'll get updates. Madam Chair, can I ask when is it going to start? Though I mean, we're really. Stretching yeah, this along. I'm, I'm I think assuming it's next week. Is it next week? Okay. I think it was the, the memo was next week. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I believe. Madam Chair, um, the we reached out to the firm and asked them to provide us with a contract. MRI. Um, last time they okay. provided us with the contract. So um, um, Lacey has reached out to them to ask them for the contract. So hopefully um, we'll get that back in. And then um, I know she said she has together a meeting yeah so, yeah that yeah. would I mean even if we didn't have the contract at that point just having a meeting and everybody you know brought together to and there's a scheduled I think April 23rd or something yeah okay. oh okay the, Lacey's in the process of scheduling Excellent. A meeting. okay with or without the contract but yeah I know someone from MI will be at the meeting oh that's great great so we're, we're stepping stepping forward on that one Oh, Madam Chair, yeah. could we go back to the Senior Center Addition Feasibility Study? Yeah. I just wanted to mention, because I didn't, I didn't catch it until I was on the capital plan the other week, um, that, uh, that the director of the COA and member Fabian reduced significantly the scope of the project um, down from, a, it was a $3 million project down to a $250,000 project to provide a pantry for uh, and, and access um, for making lunches and stuff like that. Um, I just want to say how significant that is, and that is exactly like a, a really fantastic use of like creative thinking, kind of out of the box, mm -hmm. in order to serve the people of Lakeville mm -hmm. and in order to uh, keep everyone's taxes as low as possible by not having to do a full blown addition. I was very impressed with it. I hadn't heard it. I must have missed it in one of the meetings where she had told like how significantly, you know, to go down 10% of scope is just amazing. And I just wanted to commend anyone that had mm -hmm. anything to do with that because I think we're getting what the, the, the town needs as far as services. Um, and we're not 
adding any pork into it. And I think it's very impressive to have that out of the box yeah, conversation. Agreed. So agreed. if she was here, I would tell her. <laughs> I'm sure she'll tune in. <laughs> but thank you. Um, I asked to put the next one on um, the agenda. I would like to schedule a select board goal setting meeting. I anticipate that this would be a two hour uh, a meeting for us and this would be the primary focus. And I would like to task the board uh, this evening until such time that we schedule that meeting um, to think of some goals that you as an individual on this board feel would be prudent for us to try to accomplish in the next year. And then um, I'm going to have a conversation uh, with Lacey Marshall, our HR director, as she's had training in goal setting, uh, I guess, workshops. Yes, yeah, facilitating yeah. them. Uh, so I'd like to bring her in and as part of the team and um, invite, obviously, um, you know, Tracy and Christina um, to be, you know, part of the, you know, the meeting because it affects the, you know, the select board's office. Um, and then because we are five members, I, in my mind, I think we would come up with five realistic, measurable, obtainable goals uh, for the year. But we might decide that, you know, there might be three that we would like to meet. Um, but this is goals for the board, not necessarily the town administrator. This would be our goals. And then, um, you know, those will kind of drive us a little bit, you know, as we navigate through the year. So, um, you know, look at your calendars. Um, I'm thinking that we do have a hefty month ahead of us. I know we have four meetings scheduled coming up, three budget meetings, as well as another select board meeting. Um, and then any subcommittees that we're representing, I know will be. So um, I guess maybe I'll ask the... Oh, do you anticipate this being before or after town meeting? Just since it is quite well, busy ahead of that or I would I would like us to start before town meeting okay so, so by the time town so meeting gets some here, time for our first meeting correct then, yeah because right. I figure by time town meeting gets here it's going to be summer and you know it's going to be a little difficult to try to so if I could ask the town administrator's office um, to nudge us with um, some you know I would like to use the fire, uh, the police station yep. meeting room. So I guess that would be a good place to, to start. Um, if I may, ma'am, could we have one meeting where we bring our Brainstorm. major topics in? Apps, that's it. And then, then have that meeting so that we all have a chance to say, okay, here are the topics I need yep. to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because um, I think last year when we tried this, we kind of came into the room cold and yeah, didn't know. Yeah, and we were like looking at it like, okay, where do we start <laughs> kind of thing. So, um, okay. So our next meeting is the 22nd. So um, on the 22nd, you know, I'll just leave a little under old business mm -hmm. this and uh, bring it back. And we can, you know, just share what we have. We won't deliberate on them, but we can at least pass them out so that everybody has an idea of Kind of where we're all thinking, and then we'll we'll fine tune it, and I'll work with Lacey um, on the structure of that meeting. So thank you. All right, any new business? Madam Chair, oh, yes. I do have a text from uh, Lacey. She said the TA search committee meeting is scheduled for April twenty fourth at six p.m. at the COA. Okay, April twenty fourth. COA. And it's a public meeting. So TA. It will be posted. Yes. Oh, great. Thanks, Lacey. Because <laughs> I know she's watching. <laughs> okay, any new business? I had a couple things. I don't oh, know sure. if anyone had a chance to look at the Namaskit weekly. I actually saw a copy of it here somewhere at Mr. and Leah's. Um, but Middleborough does a fantastic job at putting all the warrants in Namaskit. Everything is in there. It was just really well laid out um, as a communication tool with the residents. Um, I would like us as a board to consider doing that. Yeah, they, they advertise, so that would be the advertisement. Yeah, yeah. so I we'll think we can advertise have, on the mask of yeah, yeah, I do think we have the budget um, that yeah. we can support that, but I think that would be a really good use of our resources in order to connect with the people that are going to come, and, and then they can have their questions. Um, we know social media is hit or miss mm -hmm. with a lot of our residents, um, and I just would like to connect with people with where they are, and the Mask It Weekly seems to be 
filling that niche rather well. That so, um, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. fish where the fish are a little bit. Paper yeah. record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm almost 100% sure a previous board voted not to place the entire warrant in advertising. Um, we basically do just an abbreviated one to say um, to see the warrant, go to the town's website and it's there, or you can get a copy of the town clerk's office. So that would require a vote to reverse the previous vote. Yeah, and we absolutely can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just letting you know it yeah. would require a vote. vote. No, it was very nice. I, I, I know exactly what, because I, you know, I looked and I saw it and I know at one point, I think we were doing that, but you know, listing the whole the warrant, all of them. Yeah, I don't it remember. won't be 29 articles, mm. I can tell you that. Mm. Yeah. You don't want to be there to one in the morning? No, again? I. Yeah, well, that, if I may. Yes. Uh, the warrant is it's not a long warrant, both the special and the annual. Yeah. Um, I was working on it today, and there are other locations in town where it is posted. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Establishments. But if you want to advertise, we can do that. Yeah, I think that it was the uh, love the board to consider it because, and if you look at the mat in the masket, you can see it yeah. and the way that it's laid out, and it's a really good communication tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you want to take a vote now, uh, so we can uh, move forward on that. It's or it's you new business. Wait? When you yeah. review the it's warrants. under new business. It's new business, so mm -hmm. we can yeah, it's not vote. A, it should be a separate. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. we could vote now. We'd have to write a yeah. 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 So we can do that, or we can just add it to the agenda for next on the twenty second. Yep. Um, it would be cleaner if we put it on as an actual agenda right. item. Right. Yeah. Would you do that, please? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, my other item would probably fall into the workshop um, for, but it's um, I'm going to beat this dead horse again because I just can't help myself. Um, I would like us to consider adopting a code of conduct um, for the boards and committees, and not only the boards and committees, but for the interactions with public in town um, based on the Supreme Court decision of last fall. Um, we should really in, uh, put something in place now. So um, I would like to send something um, to the TA and um, you know, and see if their office would like to work on it. it it's a draft from some other towns. Um, the one I'm thinking of specifically is the new one sandwich just passed. They had updated um, one and they updated it again this week. Uh, I read parts of it in the newspaper and I was really impressed with how thorough on how that's done and they're also a partner with KP Law so they're already you know aligned uh, with the way KP Law would look at it so I would like the board to consider um, something like that. I think it definitely falls right in line with with our goal setting to adopt a you know policy. Yep. So excellent. Yep, we'll, uh, I'll get on that tomorrow and uh, we'll report back to the board. All right. Um, I, I had um, before this meeting, I had met with um, you know Tracy and Mr. Nunes to go over the agenda, and I had asked um, Tracy if she wouldn't mind because I, I had a feeling that it was going to be a little difficult to take notes all the time about action items that would be coming out of this meeting. Mm. Um, so uh, Tracy's going to make a, a list, and I know she had done this before, and it was really really helpful um, in the office. So um, you know, post meeting, there'll be a list of all the action things that had come out of this meeting and that that list will get shared with all of us so that we haven't we can kind of keep our minds like oh okay so we are going to be talking about this next or we did um, work on that so uh, thank you Tracy <laughs> for doing that um, I yes one New York business item that please you know done um, probably another workshop of some kind um, so we've obviously a lot of volunteers selected and appointed and I've noticed that I've seen last week during a meeting there was a comment made that completely goes against kind of municipal government procurement procedures. So I think it would be really good for us to do something. I don't know what that is to help people that are coming in, giving us their time, say, hey, I know in the private sector this works great, but there's very different rules when you're doing municipal K KP procurement. Law sorry, yeah, Madam Chair. No. KP Law facilitates yeah. um, a, an education class such as that, and we get two classes a year yeah. for free. Yeah, the, um, Bob and I were, were talking about that um, just today through um, through email. Um, you know, there was a request gone out about new or new new, new employee orientation, new member orientation and they provided a list a current list of all of the um the courses that they have and i believe we do get two um opportunities so i was going to uh, meet with uh, mr noons to look at that list and, and maybe identify based on what you were saying 
uh, because this is something that should be done maybe annually because that is because you get new members all the time yeah, yeah. Um, and even old, you know previous veteran members you know, might forget yeah. too. So yeah. the boards usually use it to triage, like <laughs> where it's like where they see an issue, right. they're, they're just like, this is the class um, that we're going to pick right. for this year. So there's, like I said, there's two of them. Do you happen to know if the um, the menu had like the cost of each class, or because no, it was just a menu. There was no cost. Yeah, there. there's no I mean, cost. Even though we two. might get to in our contract, we might still say, oh, this one's still worth it based right. on right. current situations. Right. Yeah. Well, so maybe we uh, you maybe know. we pre maybe we pre have one where we say yeah. we have four <laughs> yeah. we won't have yeah. one next year. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Do you want me to forward that list to the select board? Yes, please. Okay. That would be wonderful. Anybody else, Brenda? Would you like to bring up any new business? Okay. Um, under old business, uh, based on the conversation that we had um, at our last select board meetings, it, it had come up about uh, minutes and uh, public recordings because this is a public recording of activity that has taken place um, at a meeting and one of the things that I know that has been a challenge for me is that when I've gone back and I've looked at other boards committees and commissions um, minutes I never know who drafted them or I never know who put them together or when they were actually adopted they just show up on the website mm -hmm. uh, so I had asked Tracy to put together a sample of what it would look like and I guess in my in my mind, if we, and I actually spoke with our town clerk, uh, Lillian Drain, about this, and she uh, thought this was fantastic uh, because it does give who drafted the minutes. So if there was ever a question um, about minutes that were prepared, we could, we could be able to go right to that person. Um, and also the date that it was approved before it becomes yeah. um, but, a fun. And I'm chair, didn't we used to do this? Didn't I think some. Oh, I so think it's some, uneven. Some people did right. Something. Some people right. did this, but I would like to um, adopt this as a practice. Got it. Um, you know, when I say citywide, townwide, um, going forward, and um, I can certainly have this come back. But I wanted to at least put the thought out there because it came out of that last meeting that we had, and it resonated with me. And I said, you know what? Now I think now would be a really good time to bring it up. And um, so I think it would be nice to have a vote of the board so I'll, I'll make sure that this comes back on the next agenda yes it, it, it related to this topic um, Tracy's excellent about doing this others not so much when you post the meetings on our website by default you, if you're people like us in that case is that subscribe to those things you mm -hmm. just get like you know meeting minutes meeting minutes meeting minutes meeting minutes meeting minutes but when you get ours it will say like select board minutes for blah like in the title like I can't tell you because very often they'll upload them in batches so then you just get like nine emails from I'm just gonna pick on FinCon because they used to be on it right you get like nine emails that just say like minutes 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 minutes, minutes. where do I start and then you just sit there hunting and pecking through URLs to find the one that you're looking for like if we could in addition to standardizing this get all the people posting to standardize on no here's how you can help people so that when they get those emails it's got useful information in it i think that'd be nice as well yeah, yeah that's really a good point i know um tracy and i had a, a a sidebar conversation um that this might be something that we can we haven't done this before but bring all of the reporting secretaries um whether they're staff or you know volunteers along with the chairs of the committees um, to a meeting to talk about um you, you know the etiquette of minutes yeah. you know because uh, there's certain time frames and, and Lil um, I mentioned it to her she thought it was fantastic that she would like to be there yes because she had just put out some postings yes. about some yes. of the minute stuff as well so I'm right. sure that would be something right because it becomes you know their owner they own it right yeah. the boards committees and commission they they own it so um, this I think might be a really good time to um, yeah. to bring it together so um, I'll keep you posted as to you know if this what it, not if <laughs> let's just say when this happens um but i'll work with with tracy on that too so anybody else in on this I have, I have two items if we're done with that item. sure uh, if I may. Uh, the first one is and since we have new members um, the board had authorized me to, earlier to go and have conversations with um, at the time chairman knox uh, director of special services and town council on the idea of creating another 40-hour sub district so now yes, with the loss yes. of chairman knox 
that kind of has died on the vine a little bit. Yeah. So if the board would be pleased, I'd like to continue trying to do some of those investigations and conversations. Um, we all received the email that another 40B is likely coming um, from the same developer, which we knew, but now it's real, it's coming. Um, so I'd just like to you know, keep digging Aye. on that if I may. Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I need a vote. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody had concerns, yeah. we yeah. could talk about yeah. it at a, another meeting. But. Did the planning board elect another chair yet? But they haven't met yet. Yeah. Met. Okay. All right. Yeah, so Madam Chair, yes. tomorrow I am meeting with the building commissioner, zoning officer, and the vice chair of the planning board. Um, so, and if you would like to attend the meeting, it's at 4.15. Uh, I may be able to do that. If the board is yeah. authorizing. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just continu know, uh, yeah. it's continuation it's, yep. in my mind. Uh, yep. Member so. Day, as chairman, was very involved, as he said, with the uh, previous mm -hmm. chairman of the planning board. So that that's one of the items we will discuss. Okay. All right. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts there. I just hate to see it kind of lose right. potential momentum. Right. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank yeah. you. And then you'd report that back to the board as a yep. liaison. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, what I try to usually do is write up some minutes and mm -hmm. send them back out. Minus any okay. opinion or anything. Always good. Um, and then my second item was the subsidized housing index inventory. Yep. We talked about this a while ago, but really haven't revisited it. Um, we're still listed at 250 units on the state site. The, the production plan that we just authorized was still 250 units. There's concern that there might be some missing ones, like upwards of 20 or 30 missing ones. Well, um, that's a concern. Yes. Is it because, it, Madam Chair, is it because it fell off, like they aged no, missing, out? No, missing new ones to be added in to that. So, um, you know, whether in another meeting or so, we might want to discuss what is that process. I, I think going back in time, um, Town Administrator Garbett used to do that process to yes. keep track of everything. I don't know where that is now. It's not housed. It, any town town administrator place. Candido did it as well. So, <laughs> yes. um, so it had been with the town administrator's office. I know some communities, um, their planner, and where we, you know, are vacant with that mm -hmm. position, it, it should be housed safely with I, the town administrator's office. I believe in, it for now, but got delegated to the planner, and we no longer have the planner. Yeah. Right. And it looks like there's been no new submissions. The information is on. Uh, Nate has all of that information. Right, okay. because that's where the, I would the, pull um, it. That's where I pulled it. Right, right. So the building commissioner would have that based on um, occupancy. Uh, so we have a list of that. So I would. Yeah. So I, maybe we direct it to the town administrator. Not. Do you guys have enough to do already? It's fine. Okay. Well, I, I What's another be, thing? But um, I may be misspeaking. But is the TA also the reporting, reporting authority? officer? And when is that due per year? September. September. So, not too far off, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> It'd just be nice to make sure that we've got that I can wrapped help, up. Um, I can volunteer to um, help and kind of sift some of that out, um, especially with any of the reporting, because there was some anomalies in the reporting before that we kind of mm -hmm. fixed up and, uh, and made a little bit better in 2019 and 2020 um, to get the full merit on there yeah. um so we're, we're sitting at 5.71 percent right now so any little bit helps i'll okay. take i'll take one if you find it we were at six and a half then the new census came out fake people all right no i i think that's great uh, member candido all right we have some correspondence um i'm, I'm sorry is that it for um, old business, would you have? Do you have some old business, Brenda? I don't, uh, but I do have to get going. I'm not feeling well. Oh, so, okay. Um, oh I gosh. will be missing at my next meeting. I'm away on the 22nd, but okay. I will send you the goals that I had in mind. Fantastic. That would be Very fantastic. Good. I Sorry appreciate that. that. No, nope, thank, thank you, you for uh, for coming out. Oh, good evening. Hope you feel better. Feel better. Okay. All right. As always, we have correspondence in here. Those will be. Um, in the packet for a reading pleasure. Uh, I did ask to include going forward um, a list just of the next meeting because I know sometimes when I leave a, me a, me a meeting and we voted or you know talked about dates, I'm all over the place by the next day where I can't even remember what they were. So mm -hmm. uh, this looks right to me, April 22nd at the police station at 5.30 and then the budget uh, meetings where we will be meeting with department heads um, have we put together that schedule yet? For? Um, the budget meetings yes. with the departments? Okay. Yes, I thought I emailed it. I emailed it. I will, 
Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Bob, if you could just send it to me again, because I just want to make sure I have the right one. Yes. There's a couple of versions. So I may have to make a change, but okay. I will get okay. that out. Because okay. right. I'd like to get those posted, and I need to post FinCom as well. Yep. All right, so that's the 17th, 18th, and 25th at 5.30 at the Senior Center. So that'll be here and, yeah. The 17th, 18th, and 25th. Correct. The Fletcher hearings, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and that should conduct, um, conclude all of our regular uh, business at this time. So at this point, um, I would like to entertain a motion to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A-6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate, a portion of land located at 1 Elliott Way, if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, and not to return to open session. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to enter um, executive session. This is a roll call required vote. Candido, aye. Carboni, aye. Day, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, 745 concludes our regular open session meeting. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>